Hey TFB TV, welcome to another episode. Today I'm here with my friend Dragadouche, I mean Dragomir. Um, so <laughs> we served in the same unit in the Marine Corps, 1st Battalion, 9th Marines. And I wanted to try to talk about some of the effects of small arms downrange of the gun. I mean, usually on TFB TV we're all about shooting stuff from you know behind the trigger and behind the firing line. However, in this case, I want to talk about some of our experiences downrange and actually in gunfights um, and getting shot at and stuff like that. Now, obviously, me and Dragomir aren't the most operator in the world. You know, <laughs> I'll let the Dev Grew and CAG guys tell their end of the story as well. But what we've been through is significant to us in our own lives, and we kind of like to share some of that because it's always, always fascinating as small arms enthusiasts and people are interested in firearms what's happening downrange and what's happening on the other side, especially for young soldiers, sailors, and airmen. Um, I just meant soldiers and Marines, <laughs> actually. Um, no, but not for, too many airmen. No, no. Um, but for any of the young guys who are going downrange or maybe in a law enforcement capacity as well. So, Drag, let's first kick this off. What, um, so what were some of your perceptions and ideas, like in training, before you enlisted, that sort of thing? So My initial training was with the Navy, uh, Navy basic training and then Corman A school, uh, both which I did in Chicago at the time. I mean, we, we all assumed that we would go to Afghanistan and, you know, there'd be like hordes of Taliban, like, you know, riding their horses with like scimitars, like towards <laughs> us. Yeah. And we just engaged targets and they would just drop like they did at the range, you know? So we, we didn't know what, like our concept of what it would be like was very skewed. Um, I had friends in other units though, uh, friends in 3-6 that had been through Marja, mm -hmm. and they came back and told a completely different story. Like the way they were saying that combat was, was completely unlike anything that I'd ever like seen on, in a movie or thought about my own in my own head. So I would say that like, even if, even if you have some kind of a mindset prior to going into combat that but and you but you've never been to combat or if you have been to combat in a different type of scenario let's say you were doing jungle warfare or like close range combat like um a lot of guys did in the early days of iraq you know house to house stuff mm -hmm. afghanistan's completely different at least the part where we were at mm -hmm. it's a completely different ball game so it it, it it's not. It's never good to go in with a preconceived notion because you really don't know until you get there, and that's you know that's the message that I want to relay to people is that no matter what you have in your head, especially if you've never been in combat, about what it's like to be in a firefight and what it's like to be in a particular scenario, you have no idea what you're talking about. Like if you have any kind of preconceived notion or it's, oh my buddy from special forces told me this or my buddy who was a navy seal told me that that doesn't that doesn't mean anything to me it doesn't mean anything to veterans that have been in combat it means absolutely nothing you might as well have been telling me that you're playing call of duty like good job bro so how, how did that perception just fall apart the first your first firefight so uh you know our biggest our biggest fear was I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie like our biggest fear was that we would get our private parts shot off like that was the biggest mm -hmm. biggest fear biggest concern we had at the time which I is in a way it's an, it's an infantile self-preserving kind of you know feeling mm -hmm. but I would say the first time that we got shot at we were in uh, we were in the back of a seven ton and we were uh, moving from um, our original fob to a company fob we did a lot of ops with different companies throughout deployment we assisted them if you've ever been to a gun range and you've pulled pits aka marine corps because no other service does that you know what it sound you know what it, the sound a bullet makes when it cracks over your head like it's a very distinct it sounds like a firecracker it's very loud it's not that booming sound that it makes at the muzzle that comes a couple seconds later because the crack that the bullet makes is actually the bullet breaking the speed barrier as it goes over your head the sound and then barrier. a couple yeah the yeah the sound barrier and then a couple of seconds later you hear the boom that comes from the muzzle because the sound 
travels slower than the bullet. The bullet is supersonic, so it's going to get there before the sound that it made at the barrel does. You know, so, something, so people have pointed out that, well, yeah, I said, well, I hadn't been shot at before, you know, before my second deployment. And people said, oh, well, yeah, you have, like in the pits. And I thought about it, and it's like, yeah, it's true. I've had hundreds of rounds fly over me in the pits. But I think the difference there is the stimulus, because when you're right. in the pits, like, you know it's all safe. You right. know it's all secure. Yeah, absolutely. So you can literally hear, like, like an M134 minigun yeah. just blasting overhead, and you know yeah, you're fine. Fact you're yeah, safe. you're fine. But then, when it's in an actual firefight, you're hearing the exact same sound from the yeah. pits. But and you know you're not, not the pits. Fine. Yeah, you know it's you know. not the pits. But I think it's important to to be exposed to that sound because you know immediately what it is. And I mean, I hate to say that like your training kicks in, but instantaneously your mind goes to like return fire, seek cover, return fire. That was the. I mean, that that's the most at at, at the core, the most basic like um facet of how you go into a firefight especially in afghanistan because it's so open you in order to be effective you have to seek cover because otherwise you'll get shot out in the open and you're no good to anybody so you have to find effective cover and provide effective fire so but we, where, where are you going to provide effective fire at half the time i'm, I'm, I'm getting i'm you know? getting to that part i'm getting to that part so time we didn't even know so you know, we we just we heard we heard rounds going, and we saw tracers go over the patrol base. And I look over to my guys, and I'm like, "Dude, are they getting shot at?" It's like, "Dude, I think it's going down." Like, and there's a, another burst, and then the, the 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 guy on post. It wasn't even a post. It was a guy hey, on the roof What'd with a 240. Like, he's returning fire, so he's like, da, 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 da. So we're like. The emotional like response that I had at the time was that of extreme elation. Like it was unbelievable. Like I was like it, it was one of the most intense feelings I've ever had in my life. It was so powerful. Like the the rush is so powerful. I've never I've never experienced that same kind of rush with anything. And I've gone bungee bungee jumping. So that wasn't even close to the kind of feeling that I got from and it wasn't even directed at us. It was just the the notion that, oh my God, we're so close to combat now. Like I can I could taste it. Like I could hear it. When it's when it's your first time or your first couple times, like the the excitement takes over and you don't really think. You just you know you go you you rely on your basics. Like your and your basics are telling you that you need to kill this guy. That's what they've been teaching you in the Marine Corps this whole time is kill. You know. So you want to just kill and you're. You're not really thinking very, very much. You're not using your cerebrum. It's a, it's a very emotional response. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, there were rounds impacting. Just you could see, you could see the dirt kick up where the rounds were. I mean, you knew right away what it was. Like it wasn't a kid throwing Let's rocks. Go, go. that. <laughs> it was rounds impacting. Some were hitting the wall behind us, and you know. I mean, you could hear the snaps, and it was it was kind of chaotic. And then the trucks that had staged right outside to our left, the MRAPs pushed out, and I could hear, they were about 100 meters away, and I could hear the gunner on the lead MRAP, like, yell, like, scream, like, get some! <laughs> As he racked the 50 cal and just opened up, like, just, I mean, it wasn't even a, like, some of his rounds, like, were hitting, like, 50, 60 meters in front of the truck. Because he was just, like, going. Like, I mean, he was just, he was just shooting in the direction of where, like, the fire was coming from. Yeah. You mentioned something before about how, like, just the realization when you're taking rounds, the realization that there's somebody on the other side of those rounds and they're trying to kill to you. To kill you, yeah. I mean, and you're trying to kill them. Yeah. And it's just this very primitive, like... It's a very... Yeah, it's it's a, it's 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 almost like serene in a way, I would say, because people think that, like, when you're under those kinds of circumstances, you, you, most people would panic. But it... it I, I, I don't know how else to describe it because I've never felt it again afterwards. It's just, it, it's in those moments that you feel that, like, everything makes sense almost. It's like everything is connected, everything connects. Your brain is like, all the senses are, like, working together. Mm -hmm. Just this feeling of interconnectedness, like, 
and it, it 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 just clicks it clicks in and your your purpose becomes very clear in that moment and your purpose is to kill that guy before he kills you mm -hmm. and there is no other you don't there's no other thoughts in your in your mind beyond that there's nothing nothing except for that this guy's mm -hmm. shooting at me i'm shooting back mm -hmm. i would also um i would i would add that i wasn't a lot of the times like i I experienced fear doing a lot of the firefights you're in and a lot of uh, the skirmishes, but it wasn't it wasn't fear of oh crap something's gonna hit me it's gonna hurt a lot. Um, it was more of fear of if I get hit, someone somebody else is gonna have to carry me out of this place, or one of your buddies is gonna get hit. The fear of like man one of my guys might get hit like that that is a real fear. I'll yeah. tell you that. And then you know these are the guys that you you. You sleep in the same oh, tent or hooch or under a tarp yeah, or wherever you may find yourself, hole. under the stars in a yeah. hole. You eat with them. You you fight with them from time to time. Mm -hmm. You know, you, I mean, they're, your, they're closer to you than your brothers. So you feel for these guys more than you do for your own family members. Mm -hmm. So the thought of one of them taking one in the dome piece and like being gone really rattles at you, you know? Especially if it's because of you. It's yeah, if it's if your you fault. Like something. if you hesitate, like if you don't pull that trigger, if you don't like run out there, like expose yourself, return fire, like, or do whatever it needs to be done, mm -hmm. one of your guys is going to not come home. Yeah. So that yeah. that's a big fear. Self-preservation, I mean, I think that's almost instinctual, which is why, you know, you, you, you try to seek, you know, seek cover. Mm -hmm. But, like, you know that, like, you're going to have to expose yourself at some, some point in time. You're going to have to put yourself out there and return fire, you know, give people time to egress or maneuver or do whatever, you know, whatever it may be in the circumstance that you're in. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that, you know, that knowledge stays with you. Like it, after your first firefight, that, that becomes like that. Oh shit. Like that clicks in. It's like, I'm, this is going to happen again. This is the first time it's awesome, but it's going to happen again. I can't wait for it to happen again. But at the same <laughs> time, it's like, oh shit. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, but, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah.